Hey, this is Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys, and I love the Grandstanders! <laughs> Take it away, kid! the Grand Center's Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and tonight I'm joined by the professor, Russ Stevens, Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's Milton's first son, Tim Hoey. Well, we have another great show for you tonight. I guess like, we can think of a couple of subjects it's that we can rough, cover. It's yeah. been a rough stretch in yeah. Boston sports. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start with the New England Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, we start with the Boston Red Sox, and I will keep on saying it, the 108 victory. Boston Red Sox. I think we got 113 victories now. Yeah, really? That's right, exactly. Like that. On the uh, victory wall at Fenway yeah, Park. Yeah. So we got to hand it to <clears throat> No show was more supported over the years. You're totally right. To JBJ than this show. <laughs> no, that's true. No, that what doesn't mean we it, 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 about. No, because it, I certainly wasn't. No, one. we've no. we've been more supportive than than I, other shows. Absolutely no right. I, I've always loved them. Yeah, we always said if JBJ and we kept the bar yeah. low as far as hitting could hit what two twenty. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. And it proved right. Game two, JBJ has the key hit with the bases loaded. A Double, yeah, yep. clearing the bases. Yeah, right. And then yesterday, Grand they were going over. Salami. We can remember them all. Big Poppy's Grand Slam. Mm -hmm. J.D. Drew's Grand Slam, which we consider yep. those two yep. the two Trot most Nixon. exciting moments. But those were in Fenway, though. In yeah. Fenway. The fly and in Hawaii. Shane, Shane Victorino's Grand Slam. That's right. Yeah. So when the Red Sox hit Grand Slams in the playoffs, guys, we remember these forever. Yes, yeah. And J.B.J. hits a Grand Slam, changes the whole dynamic of the series. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely, and it just shows you that it's not batting average that matters in short series. It's clutch hits you know, and it's driving funny. guys uh, in. That was every, right. It's, yeah, it's home runs. He yeah. didn't come yeah. closer than this to any other pitch that he swung mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. He was a foot away from every other ball, and the one he connects on is a grand slam. Look, Crossy. Johnny Gomes throws out the first pitch, game two, and he's the legend in this town because he hits a key home run in game four of the 2013 mm -hmm. World mm -hmm. Series. Yeah. He put something on the board. JBJ became... A legend, if, especially if we go on and win the World Series oh, because of last night. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, they were he ahead. They mark. were ahead when he hit it. Right, but that put oh, it out oh, of it. I mean, oh, we well, with Kimbrell coming out of the right, pen, exactly. though, nothing seems safe. Exactly. Well, all you had to do is watch Matt Barnes in the eighth look like he couldn't find the plate. Yeah. And six runs didn't seem safe. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so, boys, we have actually been giving David Dabrowski his props for a while, about Nathan Avaldi, Steve Pierce. Yeah. And I've never been a big fan of Ian Kinsler, so we're not going to go yeah. there. But Nathan Avaldi and Steve Pierce have been the difference makers in these playoffs. I would say even more Avaldi. Avaldi has become, the, to me, he's become the guy right now. He's, he's the number he's one starter on this team. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got this calm about him. Yeah. He does never looks rattled. He yeah. makes me calm. Like I don't get as nervous <laughs> right, right. when Evaldi's on the Some mound. Some guys just step up as I get with any other Red Sox pitcher on the mound. It's right. really remarkable. He's kind of the opposite of Kimball. Kimball looks like he's pooping his pants every time out there now. And right. Evaldi's calm as a Porcello has a little bit of that in him too. Right he's now, he's got that going too. Yeah, like, I sure. feel good. Like yeah. I don't feel like uh, you know how Kelly was at some points right. this year, where you're just like, oh God, what's well, going to happen? Well, the thing is they. <laughs> throw strikes. I mean, Evaldi and sick. Porcello right. throw strikes. It's, it's first pitch strike, right? He's dealing from 0-1 yeah. yeah. as opposed to 1-0, 2-0, 2-1. The walks are deadly. And he's yeah. your parents 100 miles an hour. <laughs> you know, Joe yeah. Kelly is, I don't know what 100 miles an hour, but they look awful comfortable. Mm -hmm. Kimbrell, yeah. they're looking awful com comfortable yeah. with 100 miles an hour, but Evaldi, they do not. And Steve Pierce, he's become yeah. the right-handed hitter that we needed. Oh, that was a bombing hit last night. And he 
For a guy with a reputation as a poor defensive player, he's looked awful he's, good he's out there. He's dug some balls out. How, can you imagine? The end of the, that last play of the Yankee series, that ball was off line. was a great play. Oh, yeah. And he was stretched out yeah. like a gymnast. I yeah, right. still don't know how Pierce kept that ball fair last night. Yeah. The way he oh, yeah, right, exactly. How did that ball stay fair? That was Colton Fisk in the sixth game. He over. said he didn't know how it stayed it fair, too. It was bizarre. He, he, he couldn't believe yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so can we officially uh, schedule Ian Kinsler maybe for a... a Card show in Wilmington, Massachusetts, <laughs> uh, now because yeah. if ever a guy was done in his career, yeah. it was Ian Kinsler. And do you really want to see Ian Kinsler no. or Nunez on on the field at any more in the playoffs? No, Nunez is driving me insane. I mean, it's gigantic. The um, you know what what the, they're getting out of this. The Royals are getting out of their third baseman defensively, and what we're getting out of our third baseman defensively. I mean, it's almost like the you know, if the Red Sox are probably going to win, I'm I'm thinking they're going to win. But uh, it's almost deciding the series. Well, Alex Bregman has made one of the top yeah. five players. He makes it look easy. Yeah. He makes it look easy. Play. Yeah, right. Nobody could compare to him right now. Yeah. He's playing I mean, at a level. You, you ask yourself, how the heck could Cora play Nunez over Devers? And then you see the play that Devers made mm. an inning later. And you're yeah. like, well, I guess that's why he was thinking yeah. that he's better off I mean, not playing Devers. He's been third defensively yeah. all year it, They long. have nowhere to go defensively at third base. Yeah. The infield is tough wonder, all around, really. You yeah. wonder if it will be something that's addressed in the offseason. I mean, can we live with this? Devers is a first baseman. We've talked about that. He, he screams a first Manny baseman. Manny Machado is your third they baseman? They have Michael Chavis, who's, you know, if he wasn't yeah. getting jammed up for steroids, yeah. probably is their starting third baseman you probably forward. right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so boys, you know, I remember in fantasy camp when I used to be in the Red Sox fantasy camp, they yeah. would have designated runners because after day two, all yeah. of us had pulled literally every bone and muscle in our body and we couldn't move. So, Mitchie Moreland, and you love Mitchie, and you know, of course, every time I think of Mitchie, I think of Mitchie Russ Stevens. Oh, a couple years okay, ago. so you have to hit, he's a gamer. But he literally can't move. And when you know that in the last two games you've been designated run for, by Sandy Leone, yeah. who may be the slowest man in sports, like, yeah. not, yeah. not just baseball. He doesn't even run fast enough to slide. He has to fall with style. Yeah. Yeah. There's but not enough forward momentum going on. This is the that happens in beer softball league. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You get the 55-year-old yeah. guy who's had a pulled hammy for the last 10 years, and but he, he gets hit a single, like a, and he calls over yeah. the bench. The guy was even heavier than he right. is. Yeah. yeah, come on in. <laughs> Whoever know? made the last out last inning is up. I mean, it's Give him a bizarre, right? Trick. But it yeah. seems to be working right now. I played against the guy now. just like that. The guy would get a hit every, every time, single and then time. Every time, for a runner. Yeah, Happens every single time. time. And they get a hit every time. Yeah. Right? Well, it's come to the ALCS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know. Um, all right, boys, we got to give Purcello his mm. his props right now. Purcello, who literally did not well, show wait, up. Wait, let's let him win this game. No, tonight. no. Look, here's a guy that not only pitched fantastic as a starter against the Yankees, but he has twice. come in twice in the yeah, eighth right. inning. And pitch score well, more, and put out fires. And, and with confidence, the way he does it, he, he, he just like, you feel good when he's there. Oh, yeah. you, you're remember, like, okay, things are okay. Remember right who now. was my guy this year? Was Porcello. Porcello. Yeah. No, no, right? All right, I'll give yeah, you right? props. Absolutely. He, look, he's a different guy, and the reason he's a different guy is because Alex Cora is the manager and not John Farrell. Yeah, well, yeah that could have a lot, a lot to do with it. Guys well, he did with the Cy Young under. Fair. Yeah, but, but then that, he every other so year, badly. that that other year with his five point six ERA, that was yeah. a disaster. He really bounced back. You got to give this guy a lot. There's a, a, there's a sense of calm about him yeah. when he's on. Look, he yeah, pounds, a great point. He's much again, more confident. It goes much, back yeah. to what we were talking about, Timmy. He pounds the strike zone. Porcello gets in and he throws strikes and he th and yeah. he challenges hitters. He yeah. throws up and in, and he's not dinking around uh, on the edges That's of the what's strike zone. Me crazy. His body language is completely different than yeah. last year. That yeah. game Saturday night, I, I thought I was going to shoot myself in that the head. I, I have never been more frustrated at a sporting event in my life. I, looked, <laughs> I looked around at one point, and it was a one-run game, and I looked around, and nine out of ten people were on their phones. Yeah. You know what's driving me crazy? And, and, and we talked about this a little bit. I'm a 57-year-old diehard sports fan, and this is the ALCS, and that they lost me in that game. I've Four never seen you so aggravated, and including in the seventh and eighth inning, people don't talk about this. I don't know if we've got any play in the media, but we were there. Mm. There was a near riot. Well, well that, Russ, Russ threw, I was like on fire, and ga Russ threw gas on the fire. He said, Timmy, look at how long these guys are taking between pitches. <laughs> 
And now I really started noticing. Yeah. And I started losing my... Joe Kelly's checking first. There's nobody on first base. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, he's holding the invisible runner. Yeah. <laughs> the I mean, Clay Buckholz, we call They got to yeah. do something if about it. If it wasn't a referendum on how baseball needs to improve mm. dramatically Look at it. Last so, so the next well, night. Well, Baldy last night was awful with that. The next he night, was, th despite, you know, we, we won, which made it better. It was an hour and ten minutes shorter game. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're going to lose a whole generation of kids who are going to grow up to be fans yeah. like us if they don't fix this. Timmy, I think they've already lost them. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. All right. You know, Russ made a great point last night when we were texting back and forth. Does Andrew Benatendi... I wasn't texting. Andrew I'm Benatendi no, we'll, looks we'll like... He, into it. Benatendi looks like he's lost 20 pounds. He's got absolutely nothing left. Yeah, he's and Xander looks the same out. way. It's almost... You don't have, obviously, an opportunity to rest these guys... But is this a problem moving forward, seeing that we have to win six more games to get where we want to get, where two of your yeah. key players look like they're tapped out? And Xander's had this problem over the last three years where he deteriorates as the season goes Remember on. Remember when Ben Benintendi started the year, he was physically bigger. He yeah. was noticeably yeah. bigger. Right. Yeah. About 20 pounds bigger than he is. He's, he's got a boatload of talent. Yeah, I mean, like but he that. does not have the pop. He's lost the pop in September and October. Right. I just want to tell you right now, this is the World Series. The Houston Astros Tonight? versus the Boston oh, Red Sox is the World Series. Yeah. There's not a mm. chance that the Dodgers or the Brewers have... You don't think the Dodgers could give us a... A run? <clears throat> I really don't. They, they don't have the lineup to handle it. They don't have the depth in the bullpen. Well, maybe, but the, the starters could cause some trouble. Well, Kershaw scares me. I'm telling you. How about Rich Hill? The, everyone's favorite. Rich Hill's coming Milton, in. Yeah. Milton's yeah. own. Yes. Yeah. I know. It's Wade nice Miley. Wade Miley, who was cut by the Baltimore Orioles, the he same team after five that, was, today. that lost. Five? What? I don't yeah. know how many games, but they were 61 games out of first place this year. Yeah. Yeah. Wade Miley cut, was cut by the Baltimore Orioles before spring training mm -hmm. because they didn't think that Wade Miley could help make them out. that team. He's the Brewers' second starter, guys. That's crazy. Yeah. But he only lasted five pitches tonight. And you know. Uh, exactly because you know, he's we, Wade Miley. Yeah. The Red Sox have got this far, and, and we're not. I think we're seeing like half of what the Red Sox are capable I agree of. Too. I mean, Betts has been relatively quiet. JD Martinez has been relatively quiet. Yeah. These guys are, you know, in the top has. three or four. Ben we're, we're not hitting on all. We, cylinders we are hitting right on now. like four cylinders right yeah. now. I'm waiting to see this team, hopefully, in the playoffs, like play like they're capable of playing. Well, you're getting a lot better pitching. We are getting. They, the scouting, yeah. they're pitching directly to these guys. Yeah. Um, in 2013, yeah. what did they hit as a team in the World Series? Like 180? Yeah, so but every hit count. It yeah. was like JBJ. He's hitting 180. Our in the bullpen. Great but point. the ones he's hitting, our he's bullpen, making them count. who has been down here, has shined, and our superstar sluggers have. So thank, there's been a little balancing act there. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, yeah. All right, this just in from the Grand Center's live desk. Chris Sale will not pitch Game, game five. 5. He will hopefully pitch game six no, no. um hopefully there's no game six look the fact is that if we win tonight against charlie morton and really really should win that tomorrow is going to be a game we literally concede maybe it'll just yeah. we'll, we won't even show up yeah. and it'll be a forfeit nine nothing <laughs> because there's no Rest way the starters that houston astros yeah. are beating the boston red sox this year in game six and game seven at home tonight's not a, a chance with especially way, when you have Chris Sale going. Yeah, with the way Porcello is going, tonight's the night. Yeah, tonight's the night. Tonight's a huge game. I mean, just think about this. You win tonight, and you can do exactly as you said, which is pitch Erod, Price, Kelly, just hash it together tomorrow. But we lose tonight, then we're hashing it together, yeah. and we're probably and going home hope, at 3-2 yeah. to two down. Yeah, right. the Red Sox win tonight. They're going to win the World Series. Seriously, you might as well okay. start I want to see those big bats come alive tonight. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Look, the Red Sox could knock off six, seven straight. They did it all season like yeah, it was nothing. 16-2 yeah. against the Yankees. Yeah. That was a... Yeah. All right, so boys, we go to the Celtics, and it was opening oh. night, and just because it's just crazy, so now all of a sudden, clicker, 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 yep. clicker, clicker, <clears> clicker, <throat> and... We really just started the season the way we ended the season. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown yeah. are the guys. Right now. Jason but it was very nice for the Red Sox to have a 5 o'clock start, too. Yeah, <laughs> right. Jason Tatum yeah, was yeah, right. clearly, I was there, clearly the best player on the court last night. He could get, I, I totally agree. He looks like he can get any shot he wants on any possession he wants. He was playing with such, he looked like a, 10-year seasoned yeah. veteran. He was in charge of And when there. Kyrie, when there's seven seconds left in the 24-second clock, Kyrie 
throws the ball to Jason and says, you go ahead and do whatever you got to do. Look, I think it was a really, really good sign last night. Kyrie was clearly off his game, probably too amped up, that he did not try to overly force it. He was was happy to let these guys play that game out last night. Yeah, It's a big deal. Uncle Drew and Grandpa Gordon (laughs) Hayward, I'm going to continue to say that, clearly were a little rusty uh, last night. But I can see... Not the hype of what Gordon Hayward is, but I can see what he adds to the team if he's not sitting down. You know, you know I, um, t- I turned to my s- son last night and I said, I think that you're going to see now what we saw in the Bird era. I said, I think these Celtics have arrived at that level with the depth that they have and the talent level. We're in for a nice little ride for a while here, guys. I hope so. You know, we talk about the depth. And okay, absolutely. But we're <coughs> always concerned about the second team. And what kind of offense we can generate from the yeah. second team. We were talking about Jamal Crawford, who just signed yeah. actually, I think, with the what? Phoenix Suns, who we wanted to have. But last night, Marcus Morris, who scored 16 points yep. and had 10 rebounds. <laughs> I have to admit, yeah. the Grandstanders Live wanted him out of town this yeah, offseason. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I say, do we need Marcus Morris again this year in the second team offensively? Well, we'd rather he wasn't the the only option. You want to see Rosie, you want to see, yeah. well, maybe we don't want to see Smart shoot well, anymore. Well, Smart on the starters, or is he second team? Well, Smart's second always team. going to be a second team Look, unless th- somebody's hurt. I think the thing with Morris is, if he's contained, if he plays within himself, he can be a weapon. I you mean, would notice last weapon. year when he would come in, I'd say, why is he shooting every time he gets the ball? Well, that was the plan. He was the, uh, the offense of the second team. Rozier now, his game has jumped a uh, Five notches from last year. He's a legitimate scoring threat now, where he really was not last year. Well, Terry Rozier and Scary Terry uh, was plus minus was plus twenty two. Double, I was by double anyone else on the court. Terry's getting yeah. paid he, he more and like more each game, right? Um, what do we have here? Um, we talked about last year before the playoffs started. We said if we can get sixty percent of Kyrie Irving in the playoffs from Terry Rozier, we'd be happy. We felt like we got a little bit more. Yeah. Now, are we comparing Kyrie and Terry well, during Terry, the whole season? Terry last night looked like a legitimate starting point guard. He does not look like a second-team guy anymore. He looks like when he's out there, you have that feeling of confidence. Like He's this even guy, playing faster this year than he playing, played last year. He looked like a he's, starter he's last got night. another gear. I think it's going to be natural to compare them. And right. With the idea that at some point in time, uh, Danny's going to have to swallow hard and make that final comparison and say, do I resign Kyrie for five years at the max or do, do I try to bargain with him because I know I have Rogier who I could sign for less than the max for five years as a younger guy without injuries? Yeah, that's a great point. I don't think it's a fait accompli that yeah. Kyrie yeah. Irving is re-signed yeah. to a super max contract. Watching yeah. last night, it's a tiny sample. It's a tiny sample. But Rozier looked very yeah. good. You know what I thought was interesting about last night? I was wondering what you guys thought. Uh, so no one played 30 minutes for the Celtics last night. The highest was 29. Wow. Do I don't you know think if they will that, all year. Do you think that Brad could keep that up all year and maintain the peace on the team? Well, part of what Brad Stevens' you know, superpowers last year was minutes. Minute yeah, management yeah. for all those players. Yeah. So I think they're used to not playing huge minutes yeah. in a Brad Stevens system. Uh, Gordon Hayward seemed to like, you know, he, I, hit I, that yeah. pine, he yeah. doesn't like the uh, minute restriction. <laughs> they say, yeah. what's the, yeah, I mean, what, what's the, mo- the most important thing for this regular season in terms of goals for the, for the Celtics, would you say? Championship. Well, I think no, regular well, season. Well, what's of course, the most I would like to see oh, Hayward, one seed. Hay- I would like to see Hayward achieve I, superstar status again. I think that's again. the second most important goal. It's health. It's health. It's yeah, health. It's the yeah. most important thing for the, for the Celtics this regular season is to go into April with every single guy on that team healthy. Exactly. Right? I, right. And Hayward, you know, come back to his Absolutely. all-star level. Yeah. And we, then getting the number one seed, getting these young guys developed, getting Hayward. But the most important thing is to have all of our bullets in the chamber for that playoff. And we saw losing Tice, losing Larkin right. in the playoffs with the difference oh, between depth. Yeah. advancing to the yeah. NBA Finals. It's the complementary players also. I just want to put this in last night. When they were doing the, the um, substitutions, very little drop-off between the starters. You weren't really sure who were the starters and who were the substitutes. We're getting to that point yeah, he now. He scrambled the egg. Where yeah, he really did. The, the second team, boy, the, it's like a seamless um, 
the game didn't change at all when, when the substitutes were in. Yeah. You know? Oh, look, we played a, a, a good Philadelphia 76ers mm -hmm. team. We were clearly in control clearly. of the whole game, I felt. We beat them by 18, and our two stars went 6 for 26. Yeah. yeah. That's How do you, you guys to think Toronto will be this year with Kawhi Leonard? I think Leonard. they could be really yeah. good. They yeah. could be really – Kawhi's healthy. He's, he's a top-five player. I thought for sure they were going to trade him, but no. Well, they They're lost DeRozan in that trade, and DeRozan yeah. was always a Celtics killer. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, 30, 40 points We played points them every uh, Friday night, right? Yeah, that's right. In in to beat the Celtics, be you better be deep these days. I totally agree, too. Yeah. Totally Philly, agree. Philly had no depth. Every None. time it was second team on second team, the Celtics. Yeah. That's why the 22-plus. And their last year's number one draft pick, he looked like a lost child. Yeah, full A lost puppy. <laughs> yeah. A lost puppy. If they're expecting Fultz to be one of the yeah. big three on the Sixers, mm -hmm. they're in deep trouble. What but I have to admit, Joel Embiid, is one of my favorite He's players awesome. to watch. Yeah. I, 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 you know, awesome. I can't stop yeah. watching him. Yeah. Yeah. If you're the Philadelphia general manager though, and y'all watching what Tatum is doing and what Fultz is doing, and you're right, Boy, did you I forget about smoking. the general manager, Timmy. The only the fans. The fans. The fans. The fans. Can you yeah. imagine if we had drafted no, Fultz Tim, instead right. of Tatum? The first thing you said is how great Tatum looked. Total control, total control of the situation mm -hmm. and his conditions, and Fultz was wandering around. Lost. We got him in a first round draft pick. Yeah. Yeah. Danny Amazing. was like, I read yeah. Auerbach reincarnated yep. on that. One. Fultz looks like just any other guy. Oh my God. Worse, <coughs> Worse than, than any than other that. guy. That's getting Parrish and McHale for Joe Barry Carroll. Exactly. Yeah, All mean, right, so we go to the Patriots, boys. And uh, Oh, our, wait, wait, wait. I want to do a little math with you. What's that? So the Patriots are 4 and 2 right now. <laughs> okay, right. And you picked them to go 9 and 7. That is and true. The Absolutely. So they would have to go 5 and 5 the rest of the yeah, way. That's right. Exactly. Good do you think that's going to happen? I think it's quite. A, it's a possibility. Absolutely. It's a possibility. Do you think it's going to happen? I don't know yet. I'm going <laughs> to wait the final results yet. The he, season, he didn't have the hat season. on. Let me remember. I don't know yet. I'm on to uh, Chicago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, Chicago. Let's be honest. All right. As a diehard NFL Patriots fan over the course of 40 plus years, that game was absolutely arena football. Totally. And if all right, if you enjoy watching baseball <laughs> games that are 15 to 14, then that Sunday night game yep. was for you. But if you enjoy normal football with normal defense, yeah. normal offense, that was a crap show. I think it's the NFL. That's the way the rules are now, yeah. and it's predicated the defense can't Play. There is no great defense in the NFL. No, right? Oh, well, the, the great defenses, but the rules keep them. No, from but being there aren't great. any great. But there aren't any great defenses. No, the sure Rams not. have given gave up uh, thirty plus points twice. The Bears gave up thirty one to the Dolphins this weekend. Right, right. The the Ravens have played, Oswald, right. The Ravens have played well, but they've played just crappy teams. Right? It's flag it's football. Right. It's, flag, yeah. it's flag football. Skill, 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 speed, speed, It's speed. all for the fantasy people because that drags in the pink hat crowd. Yeah. The, the non-football fans, yeah. the casual and, and fans. And one thing, you have seen the catastrophic damage that these guys do the to their bodies the through the yeah. years. I mean, you don't see many NFL 45-year-old guys walking around without some major limp yeah. or, or serious. So in I, wheelchairs. You know, in, if this league is going to survive and kids are going to still continue to play football, you, you do – Try to have to take some of the dangerous hits. But as an game. entertainment entity, yeah. it's not going to be as entertaining. What is well, ending well, up? Well, I like so points. That's a quick. This is a great question that you're asking. Yeah. It's like, was well, so I more entertained? I finally let it wash over me on Sunday night to the point I was saying to Tim before the show started to the point that I wasn't even upset when Hill scored the 75-yard touchdown. At I had I mean I had no reaction because I had two thoughts. One is, it's just another score in a game full of scores. And two was, we get the ball back faster. Right. Brady, exactly. Brady said basically the same right. thing, yeah. too. Yeah. Absolutely. And when Tyreek Hill got beer spilled on, welcome to our world. <laughs> Every <laughs> game I've sat in Section 8 in, in, in yeah. Fenway Park. We got a few and drops. Anyways. We got a beer spilled on us. Ooh, he went, oh, he was taunting the fans. And yeah. the man has a helmet and pants on. We have a T-shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, seemed to it, didn't, it didn't seem to bother him that much when it happened. Yeah, well, welcome to Boston, yeah. Tariq. All right, so in the NBA, they used to say, and they still say it to some level, just wake me with five minutes left in the game, and then I'll watch it. You want to have the ball last. Play for the last play. Is the NFL totally becoming like the NBA, game. the last five yeah, minutes last in the game? Yeah, last shot wins. Hold for the last shot. Last shot wins. Well, um, I think amongst a few elite teams that, that counts. That's true. There are a yeah. lot of 
there's a lot of mediocre football teams. You know what's really, really interesting, though? The parallels between that game on Sunday night and the Super Bowl, right? What we ended up watching right. Brady do was what he was supposed to do in that <laughs> yeah, last right. drive of the if Super he Bowl. Yeah. He wasn't strip sacked. It, strip it, it was point. exactly <laughs> what he was going to do. I know, yeah. right? No one had any doubts in their mind what was going to happen in the Super Bowl if he didn't get strip sacked. Yeah, great it point. What happened Speaking on Sunday of night. the Patriots, what a morphing of the offense since week two. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we look like we had no weapons. Like, who's Brady standing yeah. back there? Who I have nobody to throw it to. I have nobody to give it to. But three weeks, the the morphing is uh, the well, Julian Edelman, Edelman and Gordon. And Gordon. Yeah. Now well, we look like we're we're stuck. Yeah. And then to my dismay, Sony. Oh, Michelle. I need Joe? to talk to you yeah, about right, that. Exactly. Joe, <laughs> Joe, who said the Mayor next, Cooper. This, the, the next hard yard that Sony Michelle earns will be his first. I hard know, yard right? Yard. Exactly. And that he's incapable of doing it. And then he must have got. 75 hard yards mm-hmm. the other night. But yeah, they right? finally, finally, uh, Joe, like, finally, <laughs> Joe, they finally, he had one touch. The Joe, sideline tackled you know, him in the first three games. Finally, <laughs> if you, if you <laughs> watch, you know, Joe. I'm like a broken record. Mm-hmm. Watch his Georgia highlights. Yeah, he, was he was incredible. Freaking you, you were awesome. Right about that. Yeah, but he was never a short yardage guy there either. Well, he got hard yards. I hit ball. Joe, let it go. I mean, he ran tough. Let it go. Joe was the big kid. That, that no, got what? I think the go on YouTube and watch Sony Michelle Sony highlights. Michelle. He looks like the second coming of Jim so Brown when he was at Georgia. Do we think that he doesn't last three do, years? <laughs> <laughs> He's not giving it up. Hope. Do we think that is there's anything he can really do to fix this defense? Uh, so that when he goes Make up against Kansas faster? City in the playoffs, <laughs> maybe in Kansas City, or go back up against the Eagles or against mm-hmm. the Rams. I don't. I think you're right. There's no. It's speed, and I don't think they can yeah. infuse themselves with enough speed on through. Well, trains. you got to find a way to induce turnovers or some you're kind of right. stop. You know, to break the other but team's rhythm. That somehow. lack of speed at linebacker is just so yeah. devastatingly obvious. It's, well, that's, the fact yeah. is that as usual, there are a lot of bad teams in the NFL. This year, we have a lot of future draft picks for next year. Nobody trades the more way, what, than Bill what, Belichick what does in yeah. the uh, trading deadline. Oh. Bill Belichick needs to go out and get some speed stud before the linebacker. deadline. We need yeah. two and stud linebackers. And you can do it. You, know, you can do it. I mean, and, and, you know, this is the year we can definitely, again, the window is, yeah. is ready to close, yeah. but we can win a Super Bowl remarkably with this pitiful defense. Oh, wait, you I thought we weren't them. making the playoffs. It's a, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Again, I'm just we saying. We could what I win see. the Super Bowl. We could win the so Super Bowl. So what do we have? Absolutely. What do we have for draft picks? Or we could go nine and seven. Do you know what? Do you know what we have for draft picks next year? Uh, we have a, a, a we have like a dozen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the first two rounds. Yeah. Oh no, they've got five picks in the first three rounds. I would love to see like what we what what the crop is of linebackers that could possibly. Uh, no, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, and we talked about last week about the defensive backfield and how they're just going by the end it's of the season. It's getting pretty old, getting along. No, but the, the defensive back backfield there. is just going to be exhausted and worn out. And you can see in the play by Devin McCourty on the last few weeks yeah. that this is starting to show itself, rear its ugly head yeah. right away. Yeah. And that's another thing. You know, Devin McCourty can't have all these responsibilities, and that's what Bill Belichick Needs to figure out he moving forward. All right, boys, so that's the show. I want to thank the boys. I want to thank everyone behind the scenes. Of course, the lovely and talented Adrian, William the intern, and of course, handsome Todd. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in on Friday night for Dirty Water Friday Night Live. Live, Grandstanders Live from the greatest bar in Boston that steps from the Boston Garden. That's our show for tonight. My name is Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. <laughs> the elephants are in town. <laughs> yeah, here comes the circus. <laughs> <laughs>